welcome everybody for spectrophotometry. Spectrophotometry, we're going to look at concentrations, different solutions, and if you look at these four, you might even be able to visibly see which one you think is more concentrated. Check make sure it's not present. Number four, that's right, would be more concentrated. You can see that based on its color. You can measure co concentrate of a colored species by light absorbance. Do this using a spectrophotometer. This is called the SPEC-20, and this is uh, like the devices we'll be using in class. In spectrophotometry, you use a colorimeter, which is a device used to test the concentration of a solution by measuring its absorbance of a specific wavelength of light. So these are called colorimeters, um, and you have a light source, uh, a monochromator, which uh, allows the light source to pass through a cuvette of a solution. This is your sample. Okay. Uh, you've got the, um, in, the adjustable aperture, which you can adjust, again, the amount of light that's going through. Uh, you've got the photoresistor in the amplifier, and then you get your output uh, in absorbance. Uh, light absorbance is directly proportional to concentration. So if you have the initial um, value here for some wavelength, as this passes through the molecules, some of the molecules in the sample absorb some light energy. The sample gets warmer, the energy is transferred to the sample, temperature is going to increase slightly as well, but since that energy is absorbed, there's not as much energy passing through. So you've got the sample width has to be controlled and that's B here, and then the detector is able to detect that change um, for the, the light that's passing through. So you know what you start with, you know what you end with, and you know the change. Um, the higher the concentration, the more you're going to see a change in that light energy. This is determined by Beer's Law. A equals lowercase abc. A stands for, capital A stands for absorbance. Lowercase a is molar absorptivity, and b is the path length, and c is the concentration. So these two equations can allow us to relate concentration to absorbance. It's dependent on the length and the molar absorptivity. Transmittance is how much goes through. So the absorptivity is equal to the uh, natural, uh, sorry, the uh, log base ten of the inverse of transmittance. So they're related to each other um, logarithmically through that inverse relationship. So what is the difference between them? So absorbance here, this is a measure of the quantity of light that the sample neither transmits nor reflects and is proportional to the concentration of the substance in a solution. So it's not reflecting it, it's not transmitting it, it's not going through, it's not being bounced through. On the meter of the SPEC-20, the absorbance is displayed at the bottom of the scale, which is logarithmic. Uh, the transmittance of a sample is the ratio of the intensity of the light that has passed through the sample to the intensity of the light when it entered the sample. So uh, uh, light out to light in, okay? intensity of the light, that's the I. The transmittance is displayed as a percentage on the top scale of the meter of the SPEC-20. So it's displayed as a percent transmittance. To convert between the absorbance and the transmittance scales, we use this equation. Absorbance equals the negative log of the percent transmittance over 100. And that gives us our conversion factor between the two. So Beer's Law up close, you can see very clearly the light, much more energy, gets absorbed, concentration, and the molarity factor, as well as the, again, the length of the, uh, of the cubet. Or the sample length. You got 100% going in and only 70% going out. Transmittance is 70%. The um, absorbance is 0.15. Determining concentration. So you determine the appropriate wavelength. That's the first step setting up your spec, to, uh, spec 20. Wavelength should be the color most absorbed. So the color that's most absorbed is the wavelength you want to choose. Zero. You zero the balance, I mean zero the spec 20. Uh, the absorbs, absorb absorbency of a re reference substance is called a blank. 
So you need a blank to zero your, uh, your device. Uh, this is a baseline value, so the absorbance of all other substances are recorded relative to that initial zero substance. Then you do the absorb absorbency of a series of standard solutions, so you make some standard solutions. Then you create a calibration curve and measure the absorptivity of solutions of unknown concentration. Then you can use your calibration curve to determine uh, the concentrations. So here, over time, we've got a reaction with uh, bromine and formic acid. And over time, you'll see that the color changes from a much richer reddish orange to a clear color. So as this reaction proceeds over time, we can measure the concentration by using the SPEC-20, by using Beer's Law. Over time, you'll notice that the absorption changes the, the I'm sorry, the wavelength compared to the absorption, you'll notice that there's different wavelengths that are absorbed more easily. So in this case, we're looking at these 400, 300, 500, 600 nanometers, all visible light. Why would you choose 393 nanometers? Why don't you choose another? Well, here we go, 393, where does it line us up? 393 puts us right about here. Right about there, well, why is that? That's the greatest amount of absorption for this particular sample. So the change in the bromine is proportional to the change in the absorption. So once you make a calibration curve, you compare the absorbance on the y-axis to the concentration on the x-axis. You then can get your standards, linear relationship, and then you can easily determine your unknown. You get the absorbance, go across, Line it up, go down, concentration. So these were two unknowns. You could determine the concentration just from putting them in uh, and gathering the absorbance. So here's a calibration curve for the absorbance of uh, iron thiocyanate. This is at 450 nanometers. Well, you might ask, well, why 450? Why not 500, 600? Different color of light. So this is based on complementary colors. Substances that does, do not absorb any visible light, uh, they're considered white or colorless. So if they don't absorb light, distilled water, colorless, should not absorb light. So that would be a good blank. Substance appears green if it absorbs all the colors but reflects green. Or if it reflects all the colors but absorbs red. So if it absorbs red, it will appear green. If it absorbs all the other colors and reflects green, it will also appear green. Red is the complementary color of green, and this is why reflection and absorption are complementary to one another. On the color wheel, they're opposite one another. So here we've got our red and our green here. Okay, red and green. They're opposite one another, and so you can see the relationship. You also have the, uh, the wavelengths on this color wheel. So if you had a sample, of a solution of copper. It appears blue. Copper appears blue, so what color are we going to want to choose for our uh, absorbing, absorption? And the SPEC-20 will want to want a wavelength between 650 and 580. It's complementary on the color wheel. So it best absorbs orange. Appears blue, it best absorbs orange. So select the orange wavelength for the spectrum photometry. Using a SPEC-20, some guidelines for using a SPEC-20. First of all, the first thing that needs to be done is you need to, again, use distilled water as a blank. Close it. It measures the absorptivity here. Okay. So here we want zero absorptivity, so we would need to uh, calibrate the SPEC-20. So we press zero. Now the water is at 0, 0.00. We can change it between transmittance. 100% transmittance goes through the water according to the standard baseline. Absorptivity is 0, 0.00. Now we remove our cuvette. Now we can take a sample. Here's cobalt. And you can see the absorptivity of 0.174, transmittance 66.99.
So here we've got absorptivity, absorbance versus wavelength. We press print, we got a point. Open this up, remove the cuvette. Now we can try another sample. Here's our cobalt, um, looks like cobalt hexahydrate, I mean, uh, hex aqua. Take a sample of this, place it in, close it down. Okay, we get a different absorptivity value. You'll notice here are the points for the measurements. So this is comparing two different samples. Usually you'll want to take one sample over time or get a standardized. So you graph, 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 you'll get your standard uh, calibration curve, and then you can move on to the next step. So how do we use the use of the spectrophotometer? It's mainly used in the lab. However, in the AP test, they do use questions on spectrophotometry. So here we've got a first order decomp reaction of a colored chemical into colorless products. So as you're measuring this, you can measure the time at which the absorption, the absorption decreases until it turns clear. So X has a molar absorptivity constant, so you're given that information there. Here's our molar absorptivity constant. Uh, you've got the path length of the cuvette, so that's our path length is one centimeter. And the data from the experiment are given in the table below. It's asking us to calculate the initial concentration of the colored species. So that's this one right here. So how to get concentration? Well, we use Beer's law. We rearrange the law to solve for 1.20 times 10 to the negative fourth molarity. That's the initial concentration. Okay. So we have the 0.6. Where did the 0.6 come from? That's the absorption. I'm sorry, the absorbance right here. Time is zero, that doesn't affect it in Beer's law. And we've got the five uh, times 10 to the third centimeters, I'm sorry, a per centimeter per molarity. And then our one centimeter. So our units match up with the centimeters. You do have to make sure they match before you move through Beer's law so they cancel out. Here, 2006, form B. Uh, this is looking at a student carries out an experiment to determine the equilibrium constant for a reaction by spectrophotometric analysis, or colorimet colorimetric as it's called. Uh, you got the red species, iron thiocyanate is monitored. The optimum wavelength for a measurement of iron thiocyanate must first be determined. So you take a plot of absorbance of A versus wavelength for FESCN is given below. So the first question, what's the optimum wavelength for this experiment? Take a moment, look at the graph. What do you think it would be? Which point on the graph has the greatest absorb absorbance? Well, we'll write it right here. Boom, there's our peak. Look at that. Take it all the way down to the wavelength, about 450 wavelength, because the wavelength of maximum absorbance by FESCN equals. So now once you have that information, part B of the same question, it has a calibration plot for the concentration of FESCN is prepared at the optimum wavelength, which we just knew is 450. Data below, draw Beer's Law calibration plot of all the data on the grid above. Indicate the scale on the horizontal axis by labeling it with appropriate values. So we got concentration, we got absorbance and concentration. So we'll plot the data on here, and then we got an unknown. The unknown has an absorption, absorbance of 0.3, so once we get the calibration curve, we can solve for the molarity of this solution. So you look at the plot that you make, there it is, there's your standard, at A equals 0.30, absorbance of 0.30, there we are, FESCN, looks like it's about right there, and again, if we look at our scale, again, our scale, uh, this here is about 16. Uh, times 10. If this is 20, it's 3, 6, 9, 12, 15, it's about 18 times 10 to the negative fourth, right? So again, that's 16, that would be 17, so this is what we want to do. So that's the measurement and molar molarity for how to go through an AP problem using spectrophotometric analysis. Here's another sample problem, equilibrium constant for the reaction. So. In this one here, you wanted to find the equilibrium constant expression. So you write your K expression. Part two, 
we've got the concentrations in the uh, sorry the initial concentrations and the absorbance of the solution so um, that's at equilibrium so from this you want to find the Kc and then if the student's equilibrium the solution is unknown concentration fades to a lighter color before the student measures its absorbance what will happen to the value of K will it be too high too low or unaffected and justify my answer so you've got the lab basis brought into this question you also have equilibrium put into it as well so the solution for this Remember, letter C and D, there's your equilibrium constant. You have to use an ice table. Solve for your K sub C. K sub C equals 40. That's part two. D, the value of KC will be too low. The lower the absorbance reading indicates a lower ion thiocyanate than actually existed before the fading occurred. So the substitution of lower FESCN into the equilibrium expression will result in a lower value of K sub C. So the KC will be too low because of that lower concentration plugged into the equilibrium expression. So that's spectrophotometric analysis. Have a good night. We'll see you tomorrow.